Good morning. Um, so today what I'm going to try to do is demonstrate yet another way to use the RC control and Teensy Arduino interface uh, to drive a robot. And in this case, <clears throat> as usual, I've been going to be using one of these FlySky transmitters. Okay, And I'll be interfacing it, uh, at least initially here, with a, a servo-based robot and of course a six channel uh, receiver right here. I've got them hooked in to uh, starting with channel 12 or pin 12 on the Teensy. I've got my servos hooked up to pins one, I'm sorry, two and three. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I actually do the demonstration. And I have other videos on this sort of hookup. An important thing to realize though, is this, con this demonstration is gonna work with basically any servo-like controller servos um, I can't really change the way they're they're wired so since there are two servos and they're facing in opposite directions okay the control for the right wheel is going to be the exact opposite of the control for the left uh, if you're going to be using something more akin to a uh, controller like this or some other uh, DC motor controller uh, you can always change the polarity of your motor if you design so you can change the, the positive and negative hookup to the output and you'll be able to change the direction of the motor. But let's take a quick look here. If we take a FlySky transmitter, or probably most any, and if I want to drive the robot with this one joystick, okay, I'm going to be dealing with channels one and channel two. And the way they historically work is they output a pulse between 1,000 and 2,000 microseconds. All right on channels one and two. If we plot that out, what we see is that as we move the stick in this direction on channel two, the signal goes from about 1500 up to, actually it never really hits 2000, but it heads toward a direction of 2000. And then in this case, it moves from 1500 to about 1000. On the channel one, it goes from 1500 to 2000 and 1500 to 1000 by default. Okay, if we look at servos, we would see that in the case of the uh, Spring RC servos, that if I want my wheel to turn uh, in a forward direction to drive the, the robot forward, I have to send a signal between 1,500 and 1,000 to make it move forward. 1,500 microseconds makes it stop, 2,000 is full speed in reverse. Likewise, it's the exact opposite on the left wheel. 2,000 is going to make it go forward, 1,500 is a dead stop, 1,000 is a reverse. So somehow we have to take these numbers and make it fit. So if we think about it, you know, going full reverse, we want the right wheel to have 2,000 and the left wheel to have 1,000. Okay, so if I pull the stick straight back and we're down here, we should have it going out in those uh, outputs. Okay, 1,000 and 2,000. Likewise, forward up, I want it to be 2,000 and 1,000. Okay? And the trickier part is when we come to, of course, changing the speed as we turn the corners. Um, if we think about it, what we really want to do is, let's work on this axis because this is probably the easiest one to start with. What I want is the wheel to change velocity uh, speed of rotation as it gets closer and closer to the center line. At this center line here, let's say for example I've got my stick pulled back, okay, and I'm moving it over to the right. What I want to have happen is I want the left wheel to be faster relative to the right wheel and as it gets closer and closer and closer eventually we want the right wheel to come to a complete stop okay and then switch directions so we're going to start heading toward a spin so it's increasingly increasingly getting more and more closer and closer to a spin and then we hit this point the wheel switches direction and it now begins to actually drive forward causing the robot to rotate so we get into a spin and an increasingly fast spin as we move over here here we should be spinning one way or the other very quickly. Here we should be spinning one way or the other very quickly. Same thing here. So when we look at the math, 
And if we plot this out, well, the easiest thing to look at is, for example, these two values here, 1,300 microseconds, 1,300 microseconds. I want the right wheel to be stopped at this point, okay? Well, that becomes pretty simple math when you think about it. We've got two numbers that are identical, okay? So I can add them, it gives me 2,600. Mm -hmm. Or I can subtract them, that gives me zero. Ooh, that sounds tempting. So if I have zero, then all I have to do is add 1,500 to it to make it come to a complete stop. So if we plot that out that way, channel 1 minus channel 2 plus 1,500 is equal to the value, we find out that going along this line, no matter where we are, 1,100 minus 1,100 is equal to 0 plus 1,500. We find out that we can make the right wheel come to a complete stop using that simple expression. Okay, Let's jump over to, well, what happens if now we're mostly concerned, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stall on that, with the left wheel, okay? Well, if we look at the left wheel, what we want is as the controller goes um, pulled back, the stick gets pulled back more and more in this direction, okay? We want the left wheel to go faster relative to the right wheel, uh, increasingly so, okay? Well, it turns out it becomes pretty simple math to do that as well. If we take channel 1 plus channel 2 and subtract 1500, we now have a relationship between these two wheels. Okay, And over here, if I want, if you think about it, what I want is my left wheel to come to a dead stop. And if we take a look at that, if we look, for example, at 1700 and... Uh, 1300. Okay, I didn't draw my line very well. Well, that becomes... Actually, we should look at it this way. Because my axes, my scale isn't quite right. 2000. 3000. Yeah, okay. 1700 plus 1300 is 3000. And then we want it to come to a complete stop, so we subtract 1500 from it. So that makes this equation ideal this equation here, channel 1 plus channel 2 minus 1500, okay, to be ideal to make the wheel stop, all right? And then we see that the wheel, the right wheel, will adjust accordingly, mathematically, as we go in this direction, all right? The problem is, using these two simple formulas, is it falls apart up here, okay? And what you end up seeing is that if we take this equation and we plug it in, we get the exact opposite occurring. So when we have the stick, for example, over here in this position, we would want the left wheel to go faster than the right wheel, but in fact we get the opposite of that. The right wheel is going faster than the left wheel. So what works out to be ideal, and not particularly difficult mathematically, we keep the exact same equations, but we flip this axis, okay? So now, instead of going from 2,000 to 1,000, we go from 1,000 to 2,000. So all we have to do is make an if-then statement, whereas if channel 2 is greater than 1,500, then flip the axes, okay? And when we do that, these two equations fit in nice. We get dead stops on the wheels that are appropriate when we run diagonal points. And we find that this wheel will begin to accelerate faster than the, the left wheel will accelerate faster than the right wheel. And likewise over here, the right wheel will accelerate faster than the left wheel. When we cross over the lines, they switch directions with increasing speed until eventually they hit a spiral. The strange part happens right here is when you're up here, okay, just ever, even one pulse width, uh, one microsecond above it, it's spinning very fast clockwise and very, go down this way, and it spins very fast counterclockwise. Ultimately, you're still spinning, both cases, okay? So if we take this little plot right here, which I don't know if I did the best job explaining, but hopefully when we look at the code, it'll make sense, and apply it, 
we should get some good decent uh, control. Let's look at the code. Um, all of this is pretty much standard. I've created my variables to hold things. Actually, I don't even need this one anymore. I can get rid of it. This calc hold, I've deleted it. Right wheel and left wheel. Um, we create two objects, the left servo and the right servo. And then we now need to set the pins. So all the pins that are used to take input data from the transmitter are all set to input. I'm going to use my built-in LED as a diagnostic tool, so I have it set to output. In this particular case, on this little robot I'm going to demonstrate, uh, I have the servos hooked up to pins 2 and 3, the right to 2, the left to 3. I like to have a flashing LED in here as a diagnostic tool. If the processor resets, you'll see your light begin to flash, which means your battery voltage has dropped too low or some other artifact of the operation has happened. It also lets me know that I've actually programmed the device because once setup runs you'll see a flash and it's like okay cool I've got the right device because when you have a cluttered desk like mine there's all kinds of things and it's easy to get COM ports mixed up. Let's jump down to the loop. The loop is basically going to take in the values. Uh, in this case I'm only interested in channel 1 and channel 2. Actually I classed channel 5 anyway. And now we're going to run the drive RC program. The drive RC is exactly those two formulas. Okay. The if it's below the 1500, if it's down here, all right, it runs the calculation exactly as I presented it. All right. If it goes to up here, well, then we have to map, we have to flip the axes which we do by simply mapping channel 1. So we map channel 1, take the value in a channel 1, we scale it from 1000 to 2000, and we tell it to replot it from 2000 to 1000. So we just flip the axes over. And then we run the equations exactly the same way as we did. Both cases we call a program called set limits. Set limit. Where is set limits? Here it is. Basically what it does is if the mathematic inadvertently carries a value over the minimum of or over the ma maximum of 2000 and under the uh, minimum of 1000 for the servo operations, it's going to set them at 1000 and 2000. It does it both for the right wheel, left wheel and the right wheel. So it just basically makes sure that we never get some oddball behavior because we've hit 21, 22 or 2300. And then it outputs the data um, into the uh, servos and we get the behavior hopefully we want. Let me pause, set up the thing, and uh, we'll demonstrate it. Okay, here you can see it running and you get proportional speed control. As I move the stick over you'll see the wheel come to a stop, switch directions, move it down, you get a switch as it spins, hit center line, comes to a stop. I'll go quickly over here. And you can see I can run along here, it stops, it switches direction, and it gives you decent control. Let me show you on the big bot, and I'll be right back. All right, now I'm going to hook up the, the big robot and upload the software. And in this case, I have to switch ports. And I think it's going to be port 5. I'm going to confirm that. So if it all goes well. So I like to said, I like why I put that flashing thing in. We should see the LED flash if in fact I got the right port. And I hope you can see that. There we go. Let's unplug this. Let's turn on this. We'll turn on the transmitter. Turn on power, and hopefully, we have control. So I will see you again shortly.